Hello everyone, welcome to the module on stereochemistry. We will continue our discussion on stereochemistry and three dimensional arrangement of atoms in space. Before we do that, let us just do a quick recap of what we looked at in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we first looked at what is the significance of three dimensional structural representation of organic molecules. Here we had seen the story of Van Toff and how he came up with this brilliant idea of three dimensional arrangement of organic molecules and that was consequently proved by experiments. And we also looked at uh, different ways of uh, representing organic molecules in 3D by using either a wedge hash uh, projection or Newman projection, Sawhurst projection and finally Fisher projections. Among this, we had concluded that the wedge hash is the most widely used method to represent organic molecules. And we will take build on this and look at what are called as isomers in this particular lecture. So I am sure you would have come across this idea of isomers in organic compounds or in other branches of chemistry like the one shown here that is a cyclohexane and one hexene have both the same empirical formula that is C6H12. But the way in which the atoms are connected in three dimensional space is totally different between these two organic molecules. So this is one particular example of, uh, of isomers in organic compounds. And another is a very simple example where if you take ethanol that is uh, CH3CH2OH and that is again has the same uh, empirical formula as that of dimethyl ether which is C2H6O. So although these compounds have a similar uh, empirical formula, they could have a different uh, physical or chemical properties. The properties could be melting point, boiling point, dielectric constant, dipole moment and many other. And one more example of a isomer in organic chemistry is this 2-methyl butanol which is shown here where the only difference is in the way which the carbon is uh, arranged that is the CH3 group on the second carbon either comes out of the plane or goes behind the plane. This is what is also another example of isomers. So before we uh, go ahead and look at uh, some of the classification of isomers, you might be interested in uh, asking this question of why to study these isomers because this looks very simple and very, uh, very naive. Is there any consequence of this or is there any applications of this? <clears throat> Just to point you one, there is a very important application that is if you take a, uh, if you actually take a simple molecule such as this which is shown here, which is the xylenes so there are three different possible isomers one is the paraxylene that is the ch3 you have so this is called the paraxylene similarly you could have an ortho and metaxylene correct So this is metaxylene and finally one can also have an orthoxylene. So these compounds are actually uh, obtained from, uh, from the cracking of uh, crude oil and once you get these these are you get them as a mixture of all the three that is paraxylene, metaxylene and orthoxylene. And it is actually very very difficult to separate them because they have very similar properties that is chemical and physical properties. They are, they are different but they are not exactly same. 
So, the difference between the properties is minor. So, now what is the consequence of this? So, if you uh, actually look at all the water bottles which we use for drinking that is the polyethylene terphthalate bottles, they are typically made by uh, they are made by paraxylene or paraxylene is one of the starting materials to make these para, uh, uh, PET water bottles. So, it is a very important commercial starting material to and it is very important to separate it from the other isomers like metaxylene and orthoxylene. So, this very simple uh, idea of isomers can actually have a profound influence on the material properties. So, even today in 2021 there is actually research going on on how to efficiently separate paraxylene, metaxylene and orthoxylene in the crude mixture because that has a very important consequence for uh, other materials which, one, which we use in our day to day life such as the polyethylene terphthalate bottles. So, I hope this at least gives you an idea or convinces you of the importance of these isomers and it is not just an academic interest, it has relevance in our day to day life as well. So, with this let us get into now uh, looking at isomers in a little more detail and so what you see is that isomers are compounds which we defined as having a similar empirical formula, but they could have a different uh, chemical as well as physical properties. And these can be further subdivided into two categories, first one is called as the uh, constitutional or structural isomers that is if the atoms are connected in a different manner between the two molecules which are trying to compare then it is called as a constitutional or a structural isomer. And the second one is called as the stereo isomer that is the connectivity remains same, but the way they are arranged in space is different. So, the difference between these two may not be apparent at this moment, but we will delve into this in a, in a minute to see what is the exact difference. And the stereo isomers can further be classified into two, uh, two more categories called as conformational isomers and configurational isomers. And this is a very subtle but an important distinction between these two classes. Conformational isomers actually have uh, do not involve any change in the uh, do not any involve any bond making or bond breaking. Whereas, to go from one isomer to another isomer of a configurational isomer, we have to break a bond and arrange it in a different form to get a, another isomer. So, I will show you examples of that as well. And further these configurational isomers can be again subdivided into two more categories which is called as a cis trans isomers and the other one is the isomers containing an asymmetric carbon. And this is a very, very both of these are very important classes and they have a profound influence on our day to day life as well. So, we will delve into that in a bit. So, let us just first begin with the constitutional isomers. A few slides ago you saw that we had looked at cyclohexane and 1-hexene and we said that they have the same empirical formula that is a C6 H12. But the if you now look at the chemical connectivity, I hope you see that the chemical connectivity is completely different between cyclohexane and 1-hexene. This is a cyclic molecule cyclohexane whereas here you have an open chain system, this is an open chain and whereas here you have a cyclic. As a consequence the properties of these systems would also be different that is melting point, boiling point, refractive index and many such properties. And not just these two molecules you can also draw another isomer of this which is a 3 hexene which is a very simply moving the double bond from uh, double bond from the first carbon from here from the double bond to the middle carbon here that is when you would get a 3 hexene. And you can also come up with more elegant structures that is 3 methyl 1 pentene that again has the same uh, empirical formula that is C6 H12. And finally, you can also come up with a little more uh, innovative ideas like 1 ethyl 2 methyl cyclopropane as shown here on the right hand side. So, here what you are saying is that with a given molecular formula you can write many many different kinds of structures and all of these are having completely different connectivity that is in cyclohexane it is a, it's a closed structure 
like for example here as you can see in this it is a completely closed structure uh, of a cyclohexane whereas if you now go to the uh, one hexene it is an open chain structure and if you now go to the completely extreme you have a cyclopropane derivative as well. So just to make you understand a bit better uh, if we can take the analogy of this cats and I hope you can see that the one on the left which is here is a is a normal cat with uh, uh, four legs and a tail. And to show you the constitutional isomers what we have done or what what is done here is that you take the same cat chop off one of the legs and put it back into its the position of the tail and take the tail back and put it in the position of a leg. So these are uh, classic examples of constitutional isomers because to go from one form to the other you need to rearrange or you need to break some bonds and make some more bonds at a different places. So I hope this gives you an idea of what you mean by uh, constitutional isomers. So now let us go ahead and look at uh, stereo isomers in a bit more uh, detail. So uh, we told that in stereo isomers the arrangement the you do not have breaking of uh, you do not have a, a significant change but the their spatial arrangement is what what differs. So in this there are two categories one is called as a conformation another is called as a configuration. So the first one is uh, what we are looking at is a conformation here that is we have a methyl cyclohexane that is a uh, what I am trying to show here is the same thing here. So I have a cyclohexane which is in the chair conformation as you can I hope you can all see this there is a cyclohexane in the chair conformation and then I have put the methyl group that is a C, uh, CH3 in the axial position here and I can actually twist this. Uh, this, this boat in if I twist it then I can actually get this axial back into the uh, equatorial position which is shown on the right hand side. And this can be done without uh, breaking of the bonds and this equally this uh, let us say so this conversion between the between the two forms that is the axial axial CS3 and the equatorial CS3 is actually continuously taking place at room temperature. So you would typically when you take a bottle of methyl cyclohexane if you buy it from a commercial source what you would get is you will always have these uh, two forms which are actually equilibrating with one another and you cannot actually differentiate or distinguish them unless you go to a very 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 low temperature something like minus 50 or even lower then you might start seeing the signatures of these two different forms that is axial and the equatorial. So this is what we call as conformation that is the isomers which do not involve a breaking of bond they actually undergo conversion between them rapidly without involving a breaking of a bond. And the next one is what is called as a configurations that is <clears throat> if you look at this particular example here which is shown on the right hand side. Here what I have taken is a 2 methyl butanol is what I have taken and this particular carbon is a stereo center or a chiral center. And to go from this to this form that is one enantiomer to another enantiomer I will come back to this term what do you mean by enantiomer in, in either this class or the next class. So one has to actually break the bond you cannot interconvert between these two forms that is between say form 1 and form 2 by just uh, rearranging the atoms. One has to actually break the bond and again form a different kind of a bond. So that is what and these are actually isolatable you can one can actually isolate them and they have very different they have different uh, properties mostly in terms of the way they rotate a plane polarized light and rest all of the properties of these two forms that is 1 and 2 remain the same. And it is very important to uh, get this distinction between conformations and configurations because both the worlds look very very similar. So please do not get confused between uh, conformations and uh, uh, configurations. So to just to illustrate this further I will show you I will give you one more example of conformations uh, which we looked at previously. So, 
So, if you take the example of the uh, ethane, so I had shown you in the Newman projection that I have a front carbon which I am now drawing here, I have hydrogens okay, and this is the back carbon, correct? So, this is what we had looked at the ethane staggered configuration. This is the staggered configuration. And now we had also looked at another configuration that is conformation that is the eclipsed. This is the back carbon, and you have similarly. So, this is the eclipsed. Okay, so, these two are actually conformations and not configurations because if I again go back to my model of uh, ethane, what I have is I have this, uh, let us say I will start with a staggered configuration. I have if you look at it from this along this bond CC bond, you see that this actually does not, this hydrogen does not coincide with anything at the back. You clearly see 3 in the front and 3 in the back. I can just rotate the back carbon, the back carbon along this CC bond to get to the eclipsed form where you actually do not see the back carbon along with the 3 hydrogens. And this I can do without any breaking. So, I can just rotate freely along this bond, along this CC bond. And this is what is called as a conformation rather than a configuration. If I have to let us say change something like for example, if I have to go from a particular configuration say I have a in this particular example, I have chosen let us say in this particular example, I have one atom is in front, another is back. If I actually want to flip it, if I want to really uh, flip it and change it or to make another enantiomer, I will have to break the bond without that it is not possible. And this is an example of a configuration and not a conformation. So, please keep this distinction between a conformation and a configuration. So, now let us go ahead a bit in the in, in this configurations and look at two different kinds of configurations. In the previous example uh, here I hope I had shown you that this particular example on the right hand side is where the stereo center is different on the carbon which is marked with an asterisk, right. But there is also another uh, kind of a configurational isomers and that is called as a cis trans isomers. So, in this particular case what happens is that if I uh, if I take a, so what all the while now we were looking at actually a CC single bond. If I actually put a two bonds between the two carbon atoms, then this rotation actually is now completely hindered because you have an orthogonal p orbital, you have a p orbital which is actually bonding between these two and that will not allow this uh, carbon to rotate freely, right. So, that is why you only have a free rotation along the CC single bond and not along the CC double bonds or even the triple bonds. So, now once you cannot rotate freely then you will actually get isomers based on how you substitute an uh, ethene and that is what we are going to look at in terms of the cis and the trans isomers. So, if you now take the, uh, if you now take this particular uh, ethene, let us say for example, which is shown here and uh, it has been now substituted with the bromine, chlorine and the two hydrogens. This is one of the form and you can also do it in a slightly different form that is you can have the chlorine on the other position on the, on the other side of the double bond and the bromine on this side. So, this would actually give rise to two different isomers. So, these are two different isomers if you want to I will call them form 1 and form 2. And these are actually completely isolatable, you can isolate them as two different products, they have different melting points, the, they have different boiling points based on whether it is a solid or liquid and they will have different dipole moments as well. So, I hope that is at least the dipole moment part is apparent because here you will have a this bond is now polarized along this direction 
and here you also you have a polarized along this direction because you have an electronegative chlorine and bromine. So, net you will have a vector addition of the dipole moment which would be somewhere along this direction right. However, so thus you will have a mu would be some number which is let us say I am putting x, x d by. However, if I go to this form, the form 2, I will have a one vector along this direction and the other vector would be along this direction which is opposite. And if I add these two vectors vectorially, individual uh, dipole moments vectorially, then I would get a, I will call this mu 1 and this is mu 2, I will get a number y d by. Because uh, the two dipole moments are opposing, you would have the mu 2 being less than mu 1. And this is clearly borne out based on how the atoms are arranged in the space that is either they are arranged on the same side or they are arranged on the opposite side of the double bond. So, and the nomenclature for this is as follows. If you have both of these on the same side, then you call them as a cis that is they are on the same side or um, UPAC nomenclature would be it is called as a Z isomer. And this Z comes from the Zuzeman, which in German means together. That is, you have both the bromine as well as the chlorine together, that means they are on the same side of the double bond. So, that is why it is called as a Z isomer. And if you now go to the, the structure 2, it is called as what is called as a trans, or they are, they are on the opposite side, or it is also called as in the U, IUPAC E isomer. Here E stands for the uh, antige antigen which in German means opposite. So, the, uh, I hope this gives an idea of how uh, by just going from a single bond to a double bond, you can first completely uh, do away the free rotation. Now, we have restricted rotation and that leads to the isomers called as cis trans isomers and the way we, uh, way we get to them I will tell you in a minute. So, let us say if I have a, a double bond now like this with substituents uh, say bromo and H, I am going to just take the same example here chloro and H. So, to do this what is typically done is on each of these carbon atoms that is this and this you need to look at the priority of the atoms. So, here and that is done by looking at the atoms with the uh, highest uh, uh, highest uh, atomic number will have the higher priority. So, obviously, in this structure bromine has a higher uh, atomic number. So, this would have a higher priority. So, I am just going to write it like this higher priority and if I come to this again here chlorine has a higher priority. So, I am going to write it as a higher priority. So, if I do this now I see that both the groups on the carbon atoms having a higher priority are on the same side and then I would name this as a cis or a Z isomer. You can do the same exercise for the second form and you would get the trans form correct. So, this looks obvious because you have uh, hydrogens and chlorines which are very easy to distinguish. So, now let us look at one example where it is a little more trickier. So, here I have uh, shown you two forms that is let us call this A and B. I am going to call this form as A and this form as B. Okay. So, now let us go ahead and try to look at the priority first because based on priority we are going to assign which is the highest priority. So, let us take at the structure A and let us start from this particular carbon here. So, I have a CH carbon here and I have the again a carbon here. So, their priority is the same. So, now I need to move to the next carbon uh, or the next atom. So, here I go to the next atom, here the next atom is again carbon whereas if I move to the next atom this is chlorine. So, obviously this has a higher uh, atomic number. So, this would get a highest pri higher priority, higher priority lower priority I am putting it as LP. Now, I am come on this carbon atom which is this. If I go to the first uh, uh, attachment it is again a carbon here, similarly carbon here. So, not a lot to distinguish. So, now I need to move to the next atom and if I move next here I have a, again a carbon or a carbon. Whereas, on this substituent if I move ahead I have an oxygen atom which has a higher atomic number compared to carbon right. 
So, now this would be the highest priority and this would be the lowest priority group. So, in this case now what happens is you see that both the groups which have the highest priority are on the opposite side that is then this would be a trans or an E or E isomer right. So, similarly if you do the same exercise here uh, what you would get is you would get the highest priorities on this carbon here and the lowest priority is this based on the same arguments as on the structure A and if you come to the other carbon atom here you will get the highest priority on the highest priority group is now actually lower or it is on the same side as that of the uh, other carbon and now you have the lowest priority group this side. So, in this case what you see is that both the groups which have the highest priority are on the same side that means this structure is I cis or you want to call it as a Z isomer. I hope this gives you at least some idea of uh, what, what do we call it as a cis trans isomer. So, now again you must be wondering uh, what use is this of or is this just purely for an academic purpose or just to study? Not really. So, the, the answer is that these kind of cis trans isomers are actually very very critical and in fact important for the vision which we are all blessed with. So, the fact that we see different molecules or different colors and things around us is based on this continuous cis trans cis trans rotation in, in, in our eyes in a molecule called as retinal. And this particular molecule is the one which would Retinol is the molecule which is actually responsible for uh, undergoing continuous cis trans cis trans isomerization in our eyes and this isomerization actually is what is uh, gives rise to the vision which we all observe. So, I hope this gives you an idea that these isomers which might look very simple with the structures which we have shown actually have a very profound influence both on the materials we come across as well as in the biological processes. With this we stop here and in the next lecture we will look at a bit more closely on stereoisomers and what are called as enantiomers and diastereomers and what role do they play in, in various kinds of materials. Thank you.